Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Enter the Bible podcast, where you can get answers or at least reflections on everything you wanted to know about the Bible but were afraid to ask. I'm Katie Langston. And I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And today we have uh, a, a returning guest, one of our favorite guests, uh, Professor Mary Hinkle Shore, uh, who is an uh, instructor in religion at Brevard College in Brevard, North Carolina, and taught New Testament here at uh, Luther Seminary uh, several years ago now, but for, for, for a long time here. Uh, and has done various other things in between, including being a pastor uh, at a Lutheran church. So, so happy to have you back with us, Mary. Uh, Thank thanks you. For it's joining great us. to see you both again. Yeah, it's good to be here. Exactly. Uh, so our question for today comes from a listener, and uh, as usual, uh, those of you who, who listen to this regularly uh, are probably tired of us saying this, but if you have a question that you would like us to address in this podcast, uh, please go to enterthebible.org and let us know. We try to get to as many questions as we can. So the question for today has to do with uh, a verse in 1 Corinthians, uh, maybe the most famous chapter in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, the one that's read at, uh, at often at weddings, uh, that speaks about seeing through a mirror dimly. So the, uh, the listener says, what does it mean to see in a mirror dimly in 1 Corinthians 13, 12? How can we live well now despite our limited vision while anticipating the clarity promised in Scripture, uh, I, uh, so it's it's a lovely question, uh, especially how do we live well now despite our limited vision? So seeing through a mirror dimly, and I know there's other ways to translate that, Mary. But how would you how would you begin to answer that question? I would start by by noticing where it shows up in uh, yeah. in the letter. As you have, you said it's the love chapter in First Corinthians. That chapter actually comes after, uh, golly, maybe a half dozen or more um, conflicts that Paul is addressing. The, the, the letter itself is in response to a lot of questions about just what does it mean to live well now in between <laughs> times, right? And are we in between times or have we, uh, uh, you know, do we have, do we know it all already? Uh, it's a, that's a central issue with Corinthians. And so Paul is saying, you don't, know it all already. Um, and we're, we're in a kind of in-between time, ethically. So he has a lot to say about that. And um, after he reflects on all of these conflicts, uh, he speaks about everyone being one body in Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 12. And different gifts, same body. And then he and then he has, then the love chapter happens. So it's not about um, the love between two human beings. It's really about love as it's expressed in a really um, real uh, community that has a lot mm -hmm. of disagreements and, and um, unfortunate misunderstandings of one another and all the things that we always have when we try to, to live together and work together. So that's the first um, maybe thing I would say. Um, the other thing that, that occurs to me is that it's a little bit, can, I think, connected to the philosophical world that Paul finds himself mm. in. So um, I don't know if anybody remembers, I had to look this up. Was it really in the Republic that Plato said? <laughs> All that sort of stuff. <laughs> but there's this famous um, allegory in Plato, the philosopher, the Greek philosopher, about uh, human life being kind of like we're chained in a cave and instead of actually seeing uh, things as they are, we see shadows on the wall of the cave. So we are, um, we're kind of, we're, we're oriented, but we're not completely oriented and we're, and we're informed, but not completely informed. And I have always read that thinking, Oh, Paul must be kind of imagining that kind of philosophy that, that that's part of how he makes sense of where we are now. Um, one, Jesus isn't back yet, and Paul expects that, mm -hmm. but also in a Platonic, or we might say Neo-Platonic worldview, um, illusion is, uh, we have to recognize that um, what we are seeing is at least uh, seen from an angle, uh, not the whole picture, and it might even be illusory, which is 
kind of depressing. Uh, I, I think instead of you know, I've always these like real. You're not seeing and it might be real, and it might be uh, you. You know, it might be more about your perspective. Um, so we and and Paul is kind of saying, "Look, I'm going to give you." what love is and how to be loving. And when I say be loving, this is what I mean. Um, and, and then he, you know, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. And, and if you hear this, whether at a wedding or somewhere else, you're like, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm boastful. I'm, I'm, I'm envious. I'm not always particularly yeah, good. Kind yeah. of, uh, working on it, but, um, but not there. And so I think there's a kind of accommodation that Paul um, says, you know, uh, and he uses that imagery of when I was a little person, I thought like a little person, right? When I was a child, I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. And we look back on our own lives and, and think, oh yeah, I've come some distance from where I thought I, you know, where I was and where I thought I knew what the world was about. I'm teaching um, freshmen right now. I'm teaching 18 oh, wow. year olds. And I remember feeling all grown up at 18, like all grown up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I couldn't understand why, you know, my mom would say drive safely or, you know, whatever she would right. say. <laughs> uh, everything was an affront to that all grown up girl. And um, so Paul says, I, when, when I was a child, I thought like a child. Uh, as a grown up, I think differently. And then I think he kind of pushes it just a little bit farther. Now we see in this kind of uh, like an old mirror that doesn't uh, reflect uh, really sharply. Uh, now we see in a mirror dimly, uh, um, then we'll see face to face. So there's a, there's a hope in it that um, the kind of love we can describe right now, we can't, or we find out about ourselves that we've, we fall short of it. That's the love that's being perfected in us through the Holy Spirit, and in, in anticipation of of the last day, really, of the Christian hope of of um, being of knowing God fully and being known fully. Yeah, I, I, I haven't love answered that your favorite part of the question, but that's enough. For <laughs> no, me. no, no. That's that, yeah, that's that's good. That's great. Uh, I, I, you just mentioned this, Mary, but uh, the, the end of that verse is so beautiful, too. So, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Mm -hmm. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. I, I mean, that's just so beautiful. Like, I, I just remember, you know, when I was a freshman in, in college and all my uh, many years of being a student, you know, with a master's degree and then a PhD, I moved around so much, right? Like to, from school to, you know, from yeah. one program to another or taking a year off for volunteering or doing internship, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I remember every new place, the thing I longed for the most was to be known, mm -hmm. right? For mm -hmm. someone who knew me, <laughs> mm -hmm. because it just, uh, uh, for an introvert such as myself, right? It's just, it takes so much energy to, to get to know people and to be known. And, and yeah. that's, you know, it's a kind of homesickness, I guess. But mm -hmm. so that, that part of Paul's chapter, right now, uh, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, uh, is just so beautiful. Like even when we're in those places, uh, new, whether it's a new place or a new job or whatever, uh, we are fully known by God, mm -hmm. uh, by Christ, and we will come to know more. Uh, at at that time, right? Uh, so anyway, that might be a bit of a distraction, but uh, that <laughs> knowing how to live, right? Uh, I think that's such a difficult thing. Like how how do we love <laughs> mm -hmm. in a society where love doesn't um, manifest itself very often? Shall we say? Uh, in the social media realm, uh, we're, we're we're recording this particular episode just a couple of days after a very contentious election, and there's a lot of uh, pain, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. enough to go around, uh, right? Uh, more than enough to go around. Uh, and I know some people are happy, and some many people aren't. Uh, and so, how do we love people who we deeply disagree with? 
about really important things, right? To stick with the text a little, it may be that there are things about those people that we don't see yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, in fact, make them easier to love. Um, hmm. uh, I think part of what it means that God fully knows us is God fully knows us as God intends us to be created and redeemed. And, um, and so that's one thing that comes to mind. I, um, you know, what confirmation bias is we, we decide we, I don't know, nobody else does this. I decide I don't like someone and then I find all the reasons why. And, mm -hmm. and then I confirm yeah, them you're, with more. You're without. definitely the only one that does that. Yeah. Yeah. I never do that. I never. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and the data that, you know, might contradict my, uh, speedy judgment. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't know. I start blinders on or <laughs> whatever. I'm, uh, seeing that through a mirror very dimly. And, um, and so part of the check I have on myself is, is what I used to, I remember that feeling, Catherine, of wanting to be known. And especially when you're misunderstood, when someone does the same thing to you that I just described, like they judge you and find you wanting and, and you're like, there's more to me than you see. Right. And, right. um, and I know what that feels like on the receiving end of it and try to remember that there may be more to them than I'm seeing. Mm. Um, it's really hard to do when you're triggered, as the kids say, um, when you're, you know, going to 11 because the other person is already there or something. Um, that's one thing I have one other thing to say about it. And it is that um, it might help to imagine the end that is to say the eschatological end, like the, the ultimate we end. Are, we, the ultimate end. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and live as if that was our destination. So given that that's our destination, that, that, that there's a love that uh, embraces us uh, all in a, you know, 51% to 49% or whatever election, um, there's a love that embraces us all. It helps me just have a, a moment, right, before I try to vote someone off the island. I don't know what the right metaphor is, but the yeah. idea that, boy, would we be better off if only right. uh, whatever the thing is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know that I do it very well, but I do believe in it. I do mm -hmm. trust it as a path um, to to um, imagine that that the love that I believe God has for me in Christ is extended to others who are, you know, maybe differently sinful, but just just as sinful, just as sanctified as as I am. There's a kind of beautiful humility, right, in the in this text that maybe. I don't know. Maybe Christian Christians as a brand aren't really known for as much. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Or even if we're talking in the context of our, you know, uh, political divisions, partisans aren't particularly known for right. that kind of acknowledgement of seeing through a mirror dimly. That acknowledgement that I'm not grasping this all exactly the way it is and for paul to be hu humble <laughs> right right yeah. paul yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah. right he yeah, i mean yeah, he's yeah. had some moments yeah. where he was maybe a little bit i'm not saying he was being not humble but there are times when he's really mad and he's not saying i'm seeing through a, a mirror dimly he's saying i'm really clear about this and you are wrong <laughs> galatians <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, w which there, you know, you have to discern when those moments are and what those things are about which maybe you you are staking something very important, right? That that's not to say there aren't places that you say no. This I'm I'm standing firmly in this, right? That that this is at stake and this is what it means to to stand here and and to say this is right, this is wrong. I think, in fact, there are two different things. Um, loving doesn't mean, um, agreeing with all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so loving, the loving thing might be to seek to better understand how someone, what exactly someone believes and how they got there. 
so you can have some compassion um, or whatever. Um, but it doesn't mean agreeing. Um, I, I don't think at all, really. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I think people right. can have very different understandings of um, what someone who is not documented in this country um, needs in order to have uh, justice and and love each other, right? I can love someone right. who I would not want their policies um, mm-hmm. implemented. Mm-hmm. Implemented, yeah, for sure. No, that's that's an excellent point, and I I think it's worth uh, reading those verses before to talk about this kind of. So again, we often hear this this uh, chapter at weddings, but Mary, you already said this isn't this isn't about the love in a marriage or a wedding. It's so much. I mean, it can be right, <laughs> but. Paul is writing about a community uh, and a community that, as you said, is in deep conflict about how how they should live the gospel, right? What does that mean? And and we'll be doing another episode uh, later about the the whole book of First Corinthians. But uh, but this kind of love is not it's not romantic love, right? It's love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. I think that gets at something mm-hmm. of what you guys were just saying. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. This is love, I think, not so much. Uh, it's not a kind of fuzzy feeling, right? Right. <laughs> This is love as a verb, love as a uh, intentional decision to act, to live in such a way as to, for, uh, for the well-being of the other, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking before we began recording. I uh, live in a part of the country that just uh, uh, underwent a hurricane in inland, and so uh, it was a surprise, and um we were most of us not very well prepared for for the dis- level of destruction, but nobody asked who you were going to vote for when they were finding out whether you needed uh, an airlift out of your flooded house, you know. Right. right or right. when um, we were trying to help our our neighbor, whose uh, I don't know seventy five year old oak fell into the cul de sac, and he was he is himself about 75 <laughs> and he was out there with a chainsaw and you know, that's a job that takes a couple of days at, in the best of, uh, with a crew. And, um, there were, um, the community showed up in, in this place in ways that, uh, I can get pretty cynical about, um, the absence of that kind of community. And I wasn't, by the end of it, cynical at all. Anyway, I could tell a lot of stories, but um, but that if we could figure out how do we do that, we did that for a week. Could we? Yeah. Could we live like yeah. that? Could we like show yeah. up yeah, yeah. for one another. And yeah. I think some of it is, of course, on the leaders and the media and who gets attention and what stories run and all the things. And I'm not just talking about this sort of feel good story about the baby bear that you know likes the mother kitten or some cat or something but, <laughs> but um, that is very cute and i do love yes those. it is it is but, and it gets but, me yes. <laughs> um uh but just like if if when you're you know i i i don't want to speak in a partisan way but i saw um a parade of pickup trucks last week because we were i'm in a battleground state and um and they're beeping and they're you know and all the things and i and I, I don't, I didn't think it at the time, but now I think, what, what if I had just imagined those people either helping me when I didn't have any running water or needing help? Is there a way that that would change how I showed up in their lives and how I imagined them showing up in mine? Yeah, which, which really does get to that kind of second part of the question, you know, how can we live well now despite our limited vision? And it feels like, you know, our vision is limited. We don't know, you know, as we are known other people or reality as it actually is or whatever. And yet, even if we're only glimpsing, you know, um, the love that is described in that chapter through a mirror dimly, if we 
orient ourselves towards that, right? And recognize it both as a gift that God gives to us and then as something that we can, however imperfectly, kind of live from. That feels like we're on our way then to living well now Mm -hmm. by catching ourselves when we're feeling um, like we would dismiss someone or, or, you know, vote them off the island, like you said, Mary, or when we're feeling contempt or whatever, um, Mm -hmm. to, to reorient ourselves. I I think even the, even the dim image of that kind of love is transformative Mm -hmm. and just like, imagine how it'll be when we are able to, to stand face to face with it, you know? How does this uh, relate to the love of God, <laughs> Mary? I mean, it's, we hear, uh, I think maybe a lot of us have heard, you know, this is agape love, right? This is not brotherly love or uh, eros love, you know, romantic love. What is? What does this say about the, the kind of God that we worship, uh, hmm. that mm-hmm. this is the kind of love that is described here? That's the Terry Fredheim of blessed memory question, right? Yes. Um, yes. How is this a God uh, passage? Part of the humility Paul has, I think, is the humility of one who understands that um, God is greater than our best uh, understanding of of revelation. So God reveals God's self in the love of Christ, for instance. I think I'd say that's the premier um, revelation of God's love. And uh, even that we will understand more fully. We will recognize the power and the and the embrace i guess of self-giving love uh, as jesus demonstrates it um laying down his life for his friends i think that's part of what this what paul means here i wonder some sometimes and i'm making this up now as i go along i, I, I help me find te- texts you two <laughs> um but if god already sees us as we will be somewhere in um is it first john yeah maybe three um little children we do not know what we shall be but we know what, that we will be like him uh, or something yeah, like for that. we yeah. shall see yeah. him as he is we will see him as he is yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 uh as he is so um we are we just haven't recognized it or don't recognize it uh uh can't recognize it yet Um, I'm not really answering your question. Sorry. No, no, you are. I think that kind of, that the self-giving love, right? That, that we know most fully in Jesus on the cross. Yeah. And, and that, and that we're promised, right? That, that we will see him, that we will know him and that we will become like him. And it's, we're not there yet, but it's a journey that, um, by God's grace, we continue, uh, walking uh mm-hmm. and uh and by the power of the holy spirit god will make us who he says we are right uh, i think there i want to say one last thing i think uh, it's last thing this speaks I, to the company we keep and the i mean company of humans and company of ideas um you can uh i sometimes say to um i i worked in um a veterans hospital in recovery uh the recovery setting uh, um that is addiction recovery. And I sometimes would say to veterans, can you put yourself in the stream that's running away from the drugs and the alcohol? Can you like, can you, can you just make it easy er for you to, that would, you would have to swim upstream to get there rather than just letting yourself be in the water. Um, that's going in a different direction with friends, with place, places, with, um, uh, so on. And I think that's true for Christians too. We can keep company with, and it's it's a it's appealing on some level to with um a very us and them, a very uh, dualistic um, friend enemy uh, way of looking at the world, and um, and and we can choose not to keep company with that. We can we can just always wherever we see that um, render it just a little bit problematic. Uh, mm-hmm. go and introduce ourselves to somebody that we really don't want to talk to or or we think we don't want to talk to or whatever these small ways to get yourself out of 
the stream that in our country has turned into kind of a, a pretty much a good and evil narrative uh, when with people mm-hmm. <laughs> as the, right, 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 right. As yeah. the actors. Mm-hmm. And, and I, anyway, that's all I want to say about that. Uh, I think we do have some choices. Um, uh, this is the work of the spirit and, um, and part of what the spirit does, I think is inspire us out of some of that dualistic thinking. Wow. Well, I bet we could, I bet we could continue on forever kind of talking about this, um, especially, you know, how, how we are to live now today in our context, but we sadly have to leave it there uh, as we've reached our time. But thank you so, so much, Mary, for being with us today. Beautiful, beautiful reflections and wisdom. Really appreciate it. Thanks to the listener who submitted such a such a lovely question. Um, and for more great resources like this, conversations, podcasts, videos, commentaries, all kinds of stuff uh, on the Bible, head to enterthebible.org. Um, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, please uh, rate and review us in your favorite podcast app or like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, and of course, the very best compliment you can pay us is to share this podcast with a friend. Until next time.